on Gratitude Day. And welcome to the group for change, Dream Big Dreams. And I am happy that everyone is here today. It looks like there's a little bit of lag. Hopefully it's not too much, but we're gonna get right on in there, okay? Wonderful. So, like I like to say, Dream Big Dreams is not just about having a lot of money, and it's not just about acquiring a lot of things, but most definitely it's about dreaming big dreams and making your dreams come true. So your purpose today, let's watch it gradually unfold. And through your personal stories, your painful experiences, your relationships with others, and well, through your life challenges, you understand who you are and who God created you to be. So today our guest is an international speaker. She's a life coach, a business professional. She's a licensed minister, a proud mother. She is an author who is on a mission to help people become who they were born to be and not settle for what society has told, tricked, or attained them to be. She's also the CEO and the founder of the Jameson Group. Everyone, let's welcome Sharon Jameson. Sharon, thank you for being here today. I am so grateful to be here. Thanks so much for giving me an opportunity to share with you and spend time with you. Um, I do have the fire within, and I know that your model is something that you believe in. And I am having a gratitude day by having an opportunity to share space with you. So thank you so much. And I look forward to our conversation today. Wonderful. And I really appreciate that gratitude with a capital G. Mm -hmm. And well, Sharon, I want to jump right into it. But I also know that this, you are, you help personal and you help with professional. Mm -hmm. So before we go any further, I just want to ask you, what is the Jameson Group? Ah, a, a Jameson Group, uh, I like to say, we are healers. We are a company that believes in self-actualization. We try to provide the building blocks to seek destiny. And when we talk about destiny, we talk about purpose, we, we talk about four key components that help people be what God has called them to be, our spirit has called them to be. So we focus on education, uh, help people understand who they are and who they are not, to, uh, to help them understand their history and how their history informs their future and their destiny. So we talk a lot about that. We also help people activate themselves because many times we, we, we have an unction, we have some clarity about what to do, but we need some tools, we need some techniques, we need some strategies, we need some courage to kind of help us, propel us into our next dimension of destiny, our higher stratosphere of success. And so we do a lot around activation. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot about elevation. I believe that when we are growing and we start to understand who we are outside of the lens of our programming, of our <laughs> historical trauma, then we are able to activate ourselves to do what we have been called to do and then not only do we elevate our lifestyle, our, our, our mindset, but we elevate everybody around us. Because I believe that Daring to Soar is a, is a collective, it's a community initiative to help us all be what we have been called to be. And then after we elevate people, we have to reach back and, and uh, continue to liberate ourselves, but work to liberate the minds of the people. When we think about it, we all have been colonized we all have been pathologized or theologized to, or socialized to be less than what God has called us to be. We have been programmed and shoved into these social boxes that really don't allow us to grow and expand all of our gifts or to discover who we really are. But when we liberate ourselves from the status quo and able to follow our own conscience and not the crowd, 
that's when we can stretch and thrive and grow and experience ourselves in life-affirming, life-changing ways. And that's what we do at the Jamison Group. And we do that for people in their personal life as well as their professional life because we, we understand that everything is connected. We are about hol holistic understanding because people can't get whole or wholesome or be in harmony or be mm -hmm. holy if they're living fragmented lives. So we try to help people see the, the common thread so that they can do what they have been called to do in every aspect of their life. Wow, beautiful. I love that, I love it. Well, Sharon, you know, I like to say that I like to live my purpose on purpose and I like for people to live their purpose on purpose. Uh, so my question is how can one or how can we live our purpose? Are there clues? Ah, oh, what a great question. Life is always giving us clues. The challenge is we have been taught not to pay attention to the clues <sighs> that have been given to us. And we have been taught to not to listen to our own discernment and to our intuition, which I think is God's voice speaking to us. And if we are taught not to hear ourselves, not to see ourselves, not to honor our unique uh, innate gifts, uh, we won't, we won't, we won't thrive. I think we all come to the world, what I call um, a, a shape, a spiritual shape. The S stands for we come to the world with spiritual gifts. So we come loaded and encoded to do greatness, to create, to contribute, to correct with mm -hmm. our DNA. So we come equipped to do amazing things in the world. So that's the S. The H is for our heart, our passion. And so I always ask myself and ask others, what excites you? What ignites you? <laughs> delight you but also what fights you because sometimes for example social unrest social injustice fights our spirit so we have to to be involved we have to contribute we have to sue to see how we can um help uh, dismantle oppression the a is for our abilities we have some natural abilities there's some things we just do well and we just have to be okay <laughs> with that uh what happens is if we don't have people in our lives growing up to witness us and affirm us, we will overlook how gifted we are. One of the blessings that I had in my life is I had a father who said, you know what, you're a good writer. Oh, you're a good speaker. God is gonna use you. So even though society, because I grew up in a very segregated uh, time in the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s, told me I was nothing, I had my father and the church members telling me, oh girl, you're gifted, you go, you're gonna do something. And so we all need to be witnessed and some people never have a chance to be witnessed or affirmed and you need to be witnessed to win because you mm. need to have your skills validated and affirmed. You need to understand that you have something unique and that's really, really important. So that's the A. The P is for our personalities. We all have different types of personalities that allow us to do our divine work. Mm -hmm. And it's no such thing as a good personality or a boring personality. It's just the personality for your job. Because some people have, are very outgoing and some people are very introverted. And don't we want that? For example, we don't want, you know, somebody doing brain surgery and they up there and they're hyper and, they're, and they can't pay attention. We want someone who is, is mechanical, who has the ability to pay attention for 20, 30 hours and to have mm. an attention to detail, right? That's their personality. Our personality serves our purpose if we understand it. And then the E is for our life experiences. We all are experts at something. All of us are experts. When we look at our experience and look at the inventory and the wealth of skills and knowledge and wisdom that we have gained on this journey called life, we are experts, all one of us. And so when you put all that together, society has given us clues through our shapes. But if we don't pay attention, mm -hmm. we will overlook who we are or if we have experienced a lot of a trauma, we mm. won't see it because trauma hides your truth. And so that's why it's so important to, to get healed because as we are getting healed, we are our gifts are being revealed. They mm. really come together. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, a lot of us really need to hear that. Uh, well, Sharon, actually, I'm gonna read something again. You know I have your book. <laughs> 
and you know <laughs> I've been reading it and I haven't stopped reading it. Oh, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> and uh, this actually comes from the end of chapter 43. Uh, I believe it's section six. It's the beginning. It's self-awareness, the journey to me. And it says, everything you have been through was a training ground to prepare you for your purpose. Everything, every experience, every season, every relationship, every failure, every struggle, and every success help you see you, know you, love you, and fortify you for your divine path. And it says, declare today, my truth will set me free to be who I am called to be. I love that. So my question is, what is it that affects a person's uh, ability to soar? Ah, oh, what a great question. Our ability to soar is affected by, by a, a few of uh, some very, very important um, variables. I call it the FDRs, you know, fear, mm -hmm. um, the fear of loss, fear of failing, fear, fear of being um, uh, judged, mm -hmm. uh, fear of, of our past being revealed, fear. The D is for doubt. Doubt is so destructive and doubt like fear are very contagious. And so we always got to be mindful of who we have around us because some mm -hmm. of our family members and our friends, they flame the fans of fear and doubt. Oh. And, and so sometimes just think about it in your own life. Sometimes you're feeling good and you're feeling really prepared for your next stratosphere of success. Mm -hmm. And you tell somebody about your dreams and they're like, I wouldn't do that. That doesn't sound like an idea. You know what? She tried that before and she, she lost her shirt, right? So, yeah. so we have to be very mindful that we don't disclose our dreams to, to people who don't have the ability or the capacity to hold uh, our dreams with positivity, with affirmation, uh, with love, and with encouragement. And so we have to really think about, can this person hold me? Can they see me? In the book, I have a chapter called, Don't Connect with People Who Don't Know What You Carry. And if a person does not know what you carry, they don't see you in how God sees you or see you how you see yourself. They will start to, not to affect you, but infect you with Ooh. seeds of doubt. And those seeds of doubts will start to grow and they start to blossom in every aspect of your life. So that's the, the D. The R is rejection. Rejection, R, as human beings, our desire is to be connected, to have a sense of belonging, to fit in. Mm -hmm. And what has happened in throughout our lives, we have erased part of ourselves to fit in with others. We have divested of ourselves. We have betrayed ourselves to fit. Now we know that society has, has demanded that racism, mm -hmm. sexism has said that you have to be more like the dominant group because the dominant group is the standard of beauty or the standard of success. You have to, you have to hold my definition uh, of, of excellence as the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand who you are and have that courage, you will not step forward because you can't deal with rejection. It's hard to be hated, but here's the truth. I'd rather be hated for who I am than to be loved for who I am not. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm loved for who I am not, I will always have to perform for the rest of my life or for the extent of the relationship. So we have to get to a point to say, am I willing to take a risk on me to love me? And to understand that loving me is not a team sport, <laughs> right? And, 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 and we have to constantly cultivate that because remember our, our confidence it goes ups and down. It's, it's not linear. Mm -hmm. You know, some days we feel confident. I don't know about you. Some days I feel like, oh, I can't do this. But that's why we have to be uh, surrounded by people so that when we are down, they're up. And when they're up and they're down, so we can always encourage each other to speak over each other's life as well as to speak into our own life. And that's why I always tell people when you have personal changes in your life, you need to make some personnel changes in your life. Because sometimes people who, who met you in yesterday will not allow you to move toward tomorrow 
without trying to, to instill fear or doubt or reject you. So we have to be mindful of how those things impact us and influence us. Man, thank you so much. And I was laughing because I uh, heard or I saw what you posted once before that liking yourself is not a team sport. And you asked the question, what do you think about it? So thank you so much for saying that. Well, Sharon, now I could just go on and on and on and I can ask you questions and questions. <laughs> Okay, and you know I could. Yeah. Well, but what I want to do is, you know, we have people out there that they don't believe in themselves or that they've been told, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that or you need to do this to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And they feel that either they're too old or they're too young. And so what I'm looking for is a dose of encouragement, some inspiration, some motivation. And I'm just waiting for you. Just give them something. Let that fire loose. What do you have to say? Oh, no, that, well, that's, that's a hard setup. This is what I would say. I want people to know that they came to the world equipped, encoded, loaded, gifted, and that God thought so much of them that they are in the world. So we just have to know that. And your worth is not based on what you produce or how you perform, the worth, your worth is basically just because. And we have to understand that so that we can understand that we're valuable. The second thing I want to say to people is that they were made in the image of their creator, not their critics. Ooh. And our critics always want to tell us who we are not, who, who we could never be, that we are not enough. But when you think about we serve, here's how my faith comes in, an all-encompassing, multifaceted, multi-passionate, all-knowing God. And I look like God. God not only works through me, God works as me, because I am the hands and the face and the feet of God on earth. It allows you to know how special you are. And all of us are, are not only the image of God, God works uh, does something for us, to us, but through us and as us. And so when we understand that we are the, the embodiment of God, you kind of understand who you are and who you have been called to be. This, the third thing I would say is that it's, it's so important to continue to do the healing work. Mm. Destiny is interesting. Destiny does not come with details, but destiny requires development, right? And because destiny requires development, we will never develop if we don't start moving forward, right? So sometimes we were like, okay, God, I'm not gonna move, I want a guarantee. But if God, God doesn't need you to give you a guarantee, God is God, right? Yes. So, so we have to be, be okay, and it's hard, it's a faith walk. And I struggle with that myself in every aspect of our life. Right. So to understand that there there is a faith walk and that we have to be able to step out. Uh, the fourth thing I would let people to understand is take inventory of what you do well. And ask people who love you, who are committed to your highest level, that what do they get when they get you? Get people to, understand, to, to give you some feedback of what they see, because our gifts and our talents many times we don't see them because they're normal to us. We don't know that we are good at fixing things and good at, at, at math or, or we don't know that we are exceptional because we were born with it, right? And something that you are born with, sometimes you easily overlook. And so that's why it's important to see and understand and have people speak into your life and say, you know what, Sharon, this is what I see that you're good at. You have to ask the right people now <laughs> and to help them see yourself because none of us can see ourselves. And, and how how we show up in the world. And I think that is really, really critical. The, the, the fifth thing I would say is that it is critical to invest in ourselves. And, and I have to say this, I find people who will uh, invest in cars, invest in clothes, invest in weaves, <laughs> um, but never invest in their mind. Oh. Never invest in their healing. Not understanding it is their healing and their wholesomeness is what helps them 
get wealth in abundance. It is a connection. If I don't love myself, I will never take a risk. If I don't trust myself, I will never be an entrepreneur. If I don't, if I don't feel valuable and, and value myself, I will always end up in toxic relationships where I am being manipulated. There's something about understanding your worth. You got to invest. And one of the challenges is people think, because we've been watching social media, that healing happens overnight. <laughs> you will heal until you show up in a casket, right? The, the journey is not done until you're dead. And one of the things I put is you're never done until you're dead. Mm. And so we have to understand that we are always evolving. And if you are always evolving and learning and, and pressure testing your paradigms, I think you will grow. Because here's the challenge. But something my therapist asked me maybe 30 years ago, Sharon, what will happen if your brokenness has the last word? And, and I, was, I was taken aback. She said, okay, now look at your life now. You don't feel confident. You're overeating. You, you're not starting your business. You don't can't hold a relationship together. What if that becomes 50, 60 years of living? That's what you call hell. That's called hell. And, and so some of us, especially in the Christian faith, we waiting to go to heaven, but, but then we're experiencing hell on earth. Mm. I don't even think that is of God, right? Because, and so if we are experiencing, if we're said that God came up to give us life more abundantly, that means that you still have to participate. You know, yes, God can pull down, give us manna. In a book, I have a chapter, yes, God can send down manna, but God also asks you to plant your own crops while you're on earth, <laughs> right? God, God could do it, but if God did that all the time, what would you do, right? Yeah. And so I think it's so important that we... We, we, we continue to, to do that. And the, the last thing I would say is important to have some type of spiritual practice, whatever that mm. means. I, I think when we don't have something bigger than ourselves, something that can, can stand when we can't stand, something that can, that can sustain us and liberate us and heal us, we will always feel like, Everything has to happen at the, at the fruit of our hands. Yeah. But, but, and nothing can happen at the fruit of our hands if it's not blessed, mm. if it's not, if it's not um, anointed, if we're not graced for it. And um, the, it, I think we have to continue to grow. Now, I'm not saying Christianity is for me, but I, Christianity might not be for others. And that's okay. Um, I think that to me, it's important to get all my stuff. For example, uh, my grandmother was a Cherokee. I go get my Cherokee stuff. You know, I go get my African stuff. I understand that the religion, the Christianity that I learned was colonized and taught by my oppressors. So I know that I have to be careful that I don't live my faith based on a Christianity that was taught to me by old slaveholders, right? Because that means I'm not going to see myself as broad and as big as God ordained me to see. And I think that's really, really critical. Wow. I love it. I love it. You know, uh, Sharon, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you uh, spoke about that because I'm sure a lot of people needed to hear that. You know, and I posted the other day something that I know you've even, you've heard it also. Uh, it's from um, Proverbs where it says, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue, you know, and I was telling people, look, not only be careful how you speak to other people, but also to yourself, that self-talk. Mm -hmm. And, well, I'm just going to jump into this because, you know, people love uh, what we're speaking about, and but then there are people who are speaking about money, yeah. and there is money, and then there's manifesting. Yeah. What can you tell us about money? What can you tell us about manifesting? Good question. I believe that we have been taught that money is evil, but it's not. Money is a tool. Money is a tool that allows us to do good in the world. And what happens is that like everything good, it has been polluted and perverted. Um, but money is a tool that allows us to build hospitals, to feed the hungry, to take care of, of the least of these. 
right? And so I, my goal, my prayer is God bless me, enlarge my territory because I can be trusted to share. It is. You know, and so I really believe that money is good. And we have to change, especially people of color who have grew up in, in, a, in a historical poverty and in, in historical injustice. We have to think about money um, differently because many times we didn't grow up with money. We don't understand money. We are not financially fluent. So we allow the media to tell us what money means versus understanding what money it really is. It's just a tool not to be exploited, but it's a tool to be used to edify um, God's people. That's one thing. Manifestation to me is just prayer. I, and I see so many people um, in the world making all this money off teaching people how to pray. Oh, you need to manifest. Girl, that's, a, that's where I'm almost prayer. That's all that is. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and that's something that really challenges me because I don't let people, it, it makes me uncomfortable comfortable when people pimp the, 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 the gospel and the gospel is just a good news, right? Um, I think people need to have good news but I don't think that we need to tell people that only our framework of prayer will bring what you want. I, I, th I think that's manipulation, right? But we have to be discerning. Manifestation is praying and, and, and preparing and participating. That's all it is. It's letting your faith have some feet. And the problem is a lot of times with the black church, we, we, instead of we pray and we stay on our knees versus pray and get up on your feet <laughs> and develop a strategy and implementation. Now that is the problem, the implementation piece, because again, we think that God is a musician or a genie, right? God could do it, but why should God? If God gave us a brain, if God gave us creativity, if God gave us the ability to take an acorn, let the tree grow up and make houses and, and chairs and, and um, homes. You know, I, we have this ability to, to create and correct. And I, I sometimes I think it's that, that the, the gifts that God gives us is one thing, but the, how we use our gifts is our gift to God. And it's so critical to say, what do I do well? And be okay with it and know that your gift will look differently. For example, I see some coaches who are um, seven figure coaches and, and but I couldn't do what they could do, not because I couldn't do it, but I wouldn't be an in integrity. Mm. Okay. And I'm not gonna sell my soul for a dollar. I'm, I'm not a prostitute, right? What is important to me is to, even when I coach people, I say, this is one way, but there are other ways. Because we all experience God. We all have our own experiences in our own lives. And I don't ever want to set myself up as a guru. There's mm. only one God. And the God's name ain't Sharon. <laughs> so all I can say is I am a conduit. This is how I understand that has worked for me and for many other people. But these might just be tools, but they're more. Because mm. God is a God of abundance. Nobody uh, has it all. And uh, uh, so I want to encourage people listening to understand, to get some type of um, spiritual practice to ground them, to, to guide them, to govern them, to governize them so that they can do what they have been called to do. I think that's really critical. Great, great, great. And once again, Sharon, I mean, I love it. And you know, I could continue we could go on like this for hours and hours, but I know you have some of the things to do and I do also. Uh, however, before we go, for anyone that, if they need some personal guidance, if they need uh, some, um, some coaching or some consulting with their business, uh, if they wanna know more about what you write about, uh, what books are out there, how can they get in contact with you? Let us know. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that. Everything is my name, Sharon Jamison. Um, they can contact me or connect with me on all social media with my name. Um, they can buy my books from my on from me or from Amazon, Goodreads, wherever books are sold. My books are at all of the major um, booksellers. So I would love for them to not only get the book, but write a review. Uh, right now, all of my books are self-published. 
So anytime when a person can, can come back and write a review, it helps me when I start um, looking to get an agent. I'm already writing, deciding to sort three now. And uh, so I would love for people to, to do that. Um, I also have a program coming up in June called I Dare to Be Me. And it is a six month life affirming, uh, life altering journey where we have an opportunity to go through those pillars, education, activation, elevation, liberation. And we, we start off uh, at differently than other coaches. I start off as making a distinction between what you were born with and what you were born in. Very, very different. What you were, you, cause like I said before, you're born with gifts and talents and wisdom and love and value, born with, but you were born in racism and sexism and oppression uh, poverty, maybe an abuse. And, and what we're going to try to do is to identify what we were born in and how those variables affect what we were born with. Mm -hmm. And if we can understand how those things affect us, we can kind of detach them and, and untangle them so we can kind of see who we are untethered from other influences that shrink us or make us doubt ourselves. And so I'm excited about the journey. We, we talk, we address careers and families and, and history and friendships and um, we do, we, uh, racism and, and other ideologies that informed who we are in our lives. And, and it's interesting, I hear people say, you know, why do you talk about racism? Because I was socialized as a black woman and I came to the world feeling really good about myself, but from, five years old to 18 years old, school told me that I was nothing. So now I have to go clean that up. Mm. Because if not, I will carry that self doubt into my 20s and 30s and 40s. And that doubt will diminish me. It will weaken me. It will prevent me from being the confident person that God has called me to be. So I have to understand why do I think so low of myself? I was taught that. I was taught it in history class. I was taught it on the news. I was taught it in social media. I was taught it by how they portray people of color mm -hmm. on the media. We have to understand we have been inculcated and indoctrinated with about messages about what it means to be a brown and black person. And if we don't address that and we don't tackle those pejorative images that internalize racism, we will not only like ourselves, but we will also not like like people, I trust people who look like us. You got to do that work. You got to do that work. And that's part of the healing process so we can see who we really are in God's eyes. And that's really, really critical. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you're just joining me, this is Charles L. Ellis. I'm of the Fire Within group. This is Dream Big Dreams. My guest today is best selling author and the creator of the Jameson group, Sharon Jameson. She's also uh, the author of Deciding to Soar and Deciding to Soar 2. Sharon, thank you for being on the show today. We really appreciate it. And for everyone out there, it begins with gratitude. It ends with gratitude. Everything in between should be filled with gratitude. And as Sharon says, get out there and please decide to soar. And while you're at it, let that fire loose. Have a gratitude day. Yes. Thank you for being here. Blessings. God bless you.